Moving back to our questions from our, our friends far flung, Kent T asks, what defines a driver's watch? I cannot seem to find any constant that unifies the nebulous group of products sold under this banner. Whoa, okay, in response, I would have to say that the only unifying fact, by the way, Remember the Orica Dodge Vipers that won Le Mans three years in a row? That thing's awesome. Heroes of my childhood. Uh, okay, so there's very little that unites the so-called driver's watch genre other than the term driver's watch. I think that those terms tend to be used interchangeably, sports watch and professional watch. Driver's watch, I'm not sure it has a natural home in that category. So let's ask, okay, diving watches. They're defined by the ISO 6425. The ISO 6425 lives online, and you can actually go visit it. And I think we've even got a picture of a screenshot of the ISO 6425. Isn't it great when we all agree on something? Historically, dive watches have been defined by higher than average water resistance, by the presence of a rotating reference timer, like an internal or external dive bezel, helium escape valves, decompression tables, extensive dial side and bezel luminescence, and bracelets with expansion features. Consider the Rolex Sea Dweller 1665, the Omega Seamaster 300, or the IWC Aquatimer reference 1812 and 812. Just consider these historic timepieces that were all very distinctly dive watches, even before the ISO existed. Now consider with pilot's watches, we have the precedent of military and civilian aviation contracts that were written up for the watchmakers to define what a pilot's watch should be. So we have in 1940, the Luftwaffe wanted visible and legible instrument style watches that were basically just a flight deck gauge put on your wrist. In 1954, Pan Am asked Rolex for GMT functionality so you could calculate a second time zone on arrival. The same year, the American AOPA, Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, asked for calculator bezels from Breitling and they got it on the Navitimer. And also that year, the French Armed Forces asked for flyback chronographs of which many, like Oricos, Dodin, and Breguet, issued candidates under the banner Type 20. So the Type 20 was originally the name of a type of watch because the contract was contract Type 20. Okay, almost all of this logic survives in the modern quartz or radio pilot's watches too, which generally group all of these features together. Now, Technicians' watches, we even have definitions for these. Historically, since the mid-50s, we had the JLC Geophysic, the E-168 from 1958. We had the IWC Ingenieur 666 and 666 AD with the date. We had the Rolex Milgauss 6543 and 6541. And we had the Patek Philippe 3417 A Magnetic. There were also two precious metal versions. But all of these came out within four years of each other. They were all anti-magnetic, water resistant, and shock resistant. Here's the problem. Almost anything can be a driver's watch. So some efforts, like the JLC Amvox 2 pusherless chronograph, which is designed to be used with gloved hands, or the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Schumacher Lap Timer do feature very specific automotive-oriented complications. That said, I would also say the MBNF HMX, or HM10 as it's properly called, which features a side scroll display, is nicely designed for driver's applications. But also consider how easily other watches get repurposed and rebranded as driver's watches. Don't believe me? Look how easily the Rolex Daytona became the original Rolex Yachtmaster in 1967. Yup, it's a sort of Paul Newman Yachtmaster chronograph thing. Two or three prototypes were made. It was a thing, but it also shows you how quickly the quintessential driver's watch became a yachting complication. So it's not really a driver's watch. There's nothing intrinsic about it. I would also say, too often you see brands simply slap a race car driver's name on an existing chronograph or product and transform it into a driver's watch. Consider the Richard Mille RM11 Felipe Massa. Okay. Now it's a driver's watch, but uh, the exact same watch with a different color and a different name, the RM11, and this is the Orange Storm in White Ghost, it's the same thing. There's nothing inherently driver's about the watch other than the name, which was the name of a driver. And then finally, you can apply some name and auto-themed imagery to an existing model, but the functionality is the same. Consider the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Gentleman Driver 
which is a driver's watch only in the sense that the Volcano is a survival watch. And, you know, I, I don't know what to say other than when the chronograph hits 12, what, you die with the Volcano? Your guess is as good as mine. The bottom line is you could also have a shotgun marriage of two marketable names that target car owners in cynical fashion. And I like the Panerai Ferrari FER15 perpetual calendar, but again, your leap year cycle is not necessary when you're in the middle of a trip down the Molson Strait just before the first chicane at Le Mans. So again, I don't think there is such a thing as a driver's watch genre. I also think the historical precedent is spurious. I don't really think this has been a class of watch historically like the diver, pilot, and technician. Consider the Patek Philippe 524. I don't believe there's anything other than the weird shape of the case that inspires people to call it a driver's watch. The Girard Perigot casquette of the 1970s was more a strange digitally themed timepiece when that was cool than a driver's focused watch. And then finally, the most famous, the Vacheron 1921 American, I don't believe that this was really a driver's watch. I think this is lore, forum folklore, and vintage auction huckster folklore that has been created retroactively. Like when people take something that is a word like spam and they create a backronym, this is the backronym of horological history. This was not a driver's watch. So no, I don't think there is such a thing as a driver's watch. I love cars and I love watches and I even love quite a few car themed watches, but I am unconvinced that the driver's watch category really exists. I think automotive is a theme, not a class. Jason, agree, disagree? Yeah, no, I agree wholly. I mean, besides, besides maybe throwing a strap that has some perforated leather on it to resemble some driving gloves, I mean, you really, when you think about the, you know, uh, aspiration to a complication, to a feature, so a dive watch, nobody, not a lot of people dive, not a lot of people are pilots, not everybody drives to work, right, so every watch becomes a driving watch, not everybody jumps in a plane and takes off, so the true, uh, you know, aspiration that we have to live these fantasies when we buy something that's capable of diving 2,000 meters when we're never going to use it or we're buying the, the Navitimer with the calculator when nobody knows how to use it um, besides the guys that are in the cockpits. I mean, those are fantasy watches. So to buy it, a driving watch, there's just, it's a confused market. There's really no, uh, you know, aspiration to have the ultimate driving watch in my opinion. Mm -hmm.